Who is it? Um, I think it's Eisenhower that said he may have taken it from somebody else. Planning is everything. Plans are worthless. I think you just reiterated to that. The planning exercise is really important to anticipate, but usually it's something you didn't anticipate. That's the opportunity. Now, all right, fair enough. I get the philosophy that I see an opportunity. And I get the notion that this is a chance to learn and that we should have that mindset. But here you are, a SEAL team out there. Stuff going wrong means somebody dies. Mm -hmm. So how do you turn that into an opportunity to learn when as much as a life is on the line? Are we talking about that person has already died or no. we're in a situation the where- The fear. It's the fear. It's dealing the with the fear. Very, so the very first thing is fear has got to be used as fuel. It can't be used as a way to stop everybody. And I would often say this, if I don't get people that are scared when we're going into that mission, I'm worried. I right. want people to have fear because fear will bring you that point of staying focused. Too much fear will literally activate your amygdala and put you in fight or flight. You won't be creative. A very simple technique on why you want to continually be able to be thinking creatively because the whole deal of dealing with something unknown is thinking creatively is you do a box breathing method, which is four seconds of breathing through the nose, hold for four seconds, exhale through your mouth for four seconds, hold for four seconds. They call it a box because it's just four seconds on each piece. Why are we breathing through our nose? Because we're activating our prefrontal cortex. Why is that important? Because there's creative thought process that goes up here and it will sidestep the amygdala. The amygdala is a little almond sized piece in our brain that will stimulate a fight or flight reaction. And maybe you've heard of it when people are like, oh, that person wasn't thinking right when they just flew off the handle and got all emotionally charged, right? When we get into those situations, Viktor Frankl used the term stimulus and response. Right. The stimulus and the response. The space between the stimulus and the response, like what I was talking about when you have this unique opportunity, the moment Victoria challenged me as the leader to say, hey, I think there's another way to do that. Stimulus and response, same thing. The unknown stimulus comes in, wait a second, take a breath. What is the stimulus all about? What is this unknown? Can we evaluate it in a different way before we make a knee-jerk response that will send us in the wrong direction? Mm -hmm. The more that you train for those kinds of things, and by the way, part of preparation is training for it, mm -hmm. then we'll be better prepared for it. So what does that mean? It kind of means what this whole show is about, Wanda. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. about training about being out of the comfort zone, yeah. right? Why before we had 2003 going to war in Afghanistan, we lost more people in SEAL training than we did in combat. Why was that? Because we were constantly pushing us out of a comfort zone. We didn't want that complacency. Right. That's the same thing when you're like dealing with the unknown. What's scary about it is it's out of the comfort zone. That doesn't necessarily mean it will harm you. It does mean that it prevents, it brings you friction. When it brings you friction, it can also bring you a path forward. But if you're not trained for that, if you're just thrust into a Navy SEAL environment, it's going to be really, really challenging. It's going to set you up for failure. So if you're the leader walking in going, all right, we're getting everybody out of the comfort zone. Well, don't throw them in the deep end of the pool if they don't even know how to swim yet. Right. right. That comfort zone, you've got to go in levels. Same thing with dealing with the unknown. Get people that have experience and mate them up with people that don't have a lot of experience, create a swim buddy program, mentorship and say, OK, that's probably the unknown for you. But it wasn't for me because two decades ago we had to deal with that. Let me explain to you how that went. And when you start sharing that and closing the experience gap of dealing with the unknown, then people get more confidence. 